Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dewey's DIY. And what are we doing today? Why am I recording in front of my computer screen? Well, since I've been working at home, all of my meetings are here in front of this desk. And this is the background that all of my managers and colleagues see uh, whenever I'm in one of these meetings. Of course, I can hide the background with a digital background or just blur it using software. However, that doesn't always work out 100% uh, of the time. Sometimes my hair gets cut off, sometimes my ears get cut off. So what I've decided for this project is to make a budget-friendly room divider. That divider will serve three purposes. First one, of course, is going to be a background for all of my meetings. Second purpose is going to be uh, to divide the office space with my sleeping space. And the third purpose will be to uh, use it as blackout curtains so that in the morning it will black out some, the sunlight here for a more uninterrupted sleep. So please join me on this adventure and hopefully we can succeed in making a budget-friendly room divider. This whole project came about because initially I was looking into wooden room dividers but decided against it because they weren't tall enough and finding something long enough to cover the length of the bed cost upwards to $200. So I started researching divider room kits with built-in tracks and these systems cost about the same as the wooden dividers. The track systems looked a little too delicate. I was worried about the build quality and how long these plastic tracks will hold up. Then I started looking into curtains with heavyweight tension rods, which looked a lot sturdier. So this is the design I decided to go off of. For tools, we need driver, drill bit, safety, screwdriver. And I bought these ceiling pipe mounts for $15. First thing I did was measure the distance I wanted from the closet to the first ceiling mount. Then with some spare cardboard, I created a template which I can accurately drill the holes for the mounts. Alternatively, you can just use a smaller drill bit to drill the pilot holes using just the mount itself and then come back with the bigger drill bit. Then choose a drill bit that's closest to the size of the thickest diameter of the drywall anchor. Then use the templates to drill the holes for the anchors. Next, I measured the distance from my first mount to my second mount. This is to make sure that it properly supports my seven foot rod. Since Home Depot only sold 10 foot rods, I asked them to cut it for free. Uh, cuts are rough, so I had to sand it down. This here is the rod I cut to seven feet so that it only covers the length of my bed. It costs $10 for a one inch by 10 feet. So the first issue, I needed someone to hold the other side of the rod so that it doesn't put too much stress on the first mount. Unfortunately, none of my roommates were home to help me. So fortunately, Mr. Beans was available to help me out. it's time to install the curtains. I opted for the cheaper, shorter curtains for $30, but the setup was not to my liking. You'll see what I mean. So I decided to buy the next longest curtain. This one cost me $40. It's gonna drag on the floor since it's slightly longer than my ceiling height, but I have a game plan to solve this issue. So this here is how much the curtain drags on the floor. No worries, this is my ghetto way of hemming without a sewing machine. Binder clips. And here it is guys, the final product. Alright guys, 
guys. So that is it for this episode of Dewey's DIY. Um, the cost of everything. So we, we bought the brackets for about $15. We bought the one inch conduit for about $10. Personally, I think we should have gone with the half inch conduit for $3 because right now the currents kind of get stuck uh, when I'm trying to slide it through. For the current itself, I was trying to go inexpensive and get a slightly shorter one for $30. However, it, it just didn't look as nice as I wanted it to look. So I coughed up another $10 for the extra foot, did a little uh, uh, customized hemming. Hopefully I have some friends out there that have a sewing machine and would like to hem it for me to make it look a little bit more professional or yeah, not as, as ghetto as it, it looks right now. But besides that, yeah, this is this was the total cost of it. So currently this is going to be what it looks like for my meetings, uh, my background right there. You're not going to see my bed, you're not going to see my bean bag back there or any of my, my clothes hanging. So all the focus is right here on me. I'm not sure if that's a great idea or not, but that was what I was looking for with the background here. So another cool thing is I have an accent light that is facing the curtains right now and with a touch of a button, I can actually change it to different colors depending on my mood. So personally, I think this is definitely DIY worthy. It was very simple. Uh, it only took me about an hour to do. I think it would have taken uh, me a lot quicker if you know I didn't have to try to record everything. I think that you would be able to do it within 30 minutes, um, especially if you have a friend. You should have a friend to help you carry around the other pole while you're mounting one side. So but I, fortunately I had beans, so I was all good. I actually think that I can use this background here for a talking head segment for all of my other DIYs. So tell me what you think. So how does it work as blackout curtains? I find myself sleeping through my alarm. Not sure if that's a good thing, but yeah, it actually works really well. I know a lot of you guys are working from home as well, and I'm not sure how your background is currently, but I hope that this motivates you into making a room divider if that's something that you think will work for you. Till the next episode, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep doing it yourself. Talk to you later. Peace.